Oh, today I want to talk about one of the most beautiful things for me. And that is chords. When I started playing guitar, to be honest, I really just played like these kind of chords, which are great. And I thought that's it. That's guitar. But I felt there's something more, and then I found these. But I still knew there is more. And what I want to talk about today is actually seven levels, seven concepts and ideas that are very simple that I learned during uh, my time in New York. Some of them are really applicable immediately, some take some practice. What I want to do today is understand why these sound so good. <laughs> it's just. And I thought I don't need to play a lot of chords if I can just, you know. Solo. But the truth is that we can't really solo well unless we know how to play chords. So what we're gonna do right now is just dive in. I'm gonna show you exactly what's happening. One, start with very, very simple idea. For me, the first song I think I wrote on guitar is this. That's it. But the cool thing about it, I remember understanding that I could take a shape, E major, and move it around. But the cool thing about guitar, I guess, is that lushness when we get, when we hear the E and the B string kind of ringing. So just by moving these chords and shapes, we get very, very lush sounds. Now, I would suggest just trying, just trying it out. Literally just moving it around and seeing what sounds good. Check this out. I can take this one here, an octave higher. Move it down. Maybe another one. So E major. This is D major over E. C and B. Again, super simple, but super beautiful. And what happens if I just change the first chord from major to minor? Check this out. Maybe a little seven. Let me loop this. A little distortion. point of this is that we can actually make really cool music with very simple pieces of information. This is just E minor, D major, and C, and then C7 at the end there. And I was able to solo on E minor pentatonic. So again, just taking a shape and moving it around a guitar is really cool. Level two. Oh, I have really big news. I'm going to release something I've been working on for quite a while, and that is a a course, a music, guitar music course, and it's actually pretty much for people who don't have a ton of experience who wants to unlock the fingerboard. You know, if you're feeling that you don't see it enough to create what you want to create, this course is really for you. And it's a lot of things that I used to practice and still practice in order to really unlock and understand things. So if you're interested in that, there is a link in the bio that will give you also discount when the course is out. So just click it and yeah, thanks. Oh, check this voicing out. This is one of my favorites as well. F major seven nine, you can move it all around. I love this voicing so much. One more important voicing, C minor seven, nine. You can also add these two. You can also take other shapes, for example, C major. That was another revelation, because I can take this chord and just also move it. Ah, how cool is that? Now, of course, it's not gonna always work because it's a very large sound, but some of these are gonna work. Of course, not all of them. 
and this is where our ear comes into play and also our theory we can understand that you know this is C major and if I play this chord here I get a 9 and if I have this open B I also get the 6 which could work in a lot of cases because it's super lush but maybe I'll have to add a finger here or adjust the idea is really listening carefully to the sounds. All right, so this is, I know, still basic, you know it, you've tried it. Level three, here we're taking the same idea, because think about it, what's cool about this E thing that I moved, is that we have the E and the B kind of ringing when other chords are changing. So then I was telling myself, when I'm talking to myself, like, dude, I was saying, basically take a note, for example, F, and find chords that have that note as a common tone. I'm gonna grab some, some last year chords. So I'm gonna grab, this is a favorite chord, B flat, first inversion, so B flat over D9. So this is a really beautiful chord. It's basically B flat major, but over D and with a nine, we have this C, super lush. And then I'm gonna keep this F on top, play this D flat major 7, this classic shape, this G minor shape, there's barring the third fret and having the F on top and then A flat major 7, 6. The idea is that we have this common tone that links these chords together. I can continue doing so with further chords to get different sounds, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of keep it simple for now so we just have like a few sounds. I'm gonna loop it, check this out. And I can hear this center. Just this F pentatonic. If you're feeling this video and you feel like you got something interesting out of it, consider harshly hitting the like button and maybe even dropping a comment telling us which chord you like the best and if you write a song with one of these chords and shapes maybe you can share it in the comment section please check out the patreon there's a ton of, inform uh, ton of information including a pdf for this video thanks so much point here is that we find a common note that we like and we can find different shapes whoa sorry that was on stop stop it stopped. So the point here is really that we can take a, a note and try to find different shapes that work with this chord. Now of course you can say well but I don't know a lot of shapes. Right. This is where this is why we're talking right. So one of the things that we're gonna talk about at the end of the video is some more framework. When I'm saying framework I basically mean a lot of shapes. So for now I'm gonna show you a few more levels of kind of like instant chords and instant things that you can use and mess around and be like wow this is really useful and i was like things that are just figured out and found from different people that are like oh really easy to do but really cool and at the end of the video if you want to dive a little bit deeper to understand how this really works so you can create a lot more of these then you need level seven i was saying before that i felt in a way after learning some cool shapes on guitar that the basic stuff is not cool but again and again I find how wrong I was thinking the C major is not a cool chord or the G major is not a hip chord it's a very beautiful sound actually and there is a lot of power in the triads which brings me to the next level guitar is a beautiful thing and some of the registers sound pretty amazing especially when you play simple things so one of the things that I love the most is taking a simple triads, even one and three, just moving that around could be a very beautiful thing, like we know from... I just... But it's not only that song that sounds so cool, it's that sound in guitar, it's something in the register that really resonates beautifully with the instrument. And I want to show you guys a little thing that I use a lot. So 
For example, if I have the chord B flat major, I like playing it instead of playing just an old good old fashioned bar chord, I like spreading it like this. So I have the 3 here and the 5 here. It sounds a little different even on this set of string and this set of string. They just resonate a little different to my ears. And so I like taking this shape and also playing the inversion of this. So taking this B flat here and then maybe here. So these are very simple chords. I'm going to show you to really quickly. It's the same shape that I'm using again and again. This is kind of like a little thing. So B flat major to B flat major first inversion. This is the shape. E flat major, the same shape. Two, and this is basically C major over E, first inversion. So again, I'm using these tries with inversions that creates a lot of beautiful sound to my ears. And F major, and this is an F dominant uh, third inversion resolved to B flat major first inversion, B flat minor, C major sus to F. This little progression again is could be as a be seen as a little etude that you just kind of do to understand the shapes. But once you start grasping these shapes, they get easier and easier and you can keep going and of course you can combine these with other shapes later on to create songs and sounds and that's what's really cool about guitar once we know more shapes we can really start feeling free so I hope I'm convincing you with the power of the chords I want to take one little thing that I also like doing um, and this is taking a pop song or a song that you like or any progression honestly that you find cool I'm gonna take the song Creep G major, B major, C major and C minor but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all make all these chords major 7 or at least sound them so I'm gonna start with G major 7 and then maybe I'll keep the B7 dominant and then C major 7 and C minor 6, all shell chords. So I'm starting to kind of lose the sound of the song almost, which is cool. I don't need to play the song. I want to just get inspired. And now I'm going to also take, instead of G major, I'm going to play G major first inversion. It's a really beautiful sound to my ears. Then from here, I'm going to play B7 first inversion to C major first inversion. C minor 6 root position. What I'm doing here again, I'm using three inversions, always first inversion, the last chord is root position. This is, I know, getting a little bit more involved, but this is what you want because you want to understand and be flexible with the information. You want to be able to take a song and just mess with it. I'm gonna drink some tea. So we have G major 7 to B7 first inversion, C major 7 first inversion. You see it's the same shape, just here it's an open string. And then C minor 6. Now what happens if I want to do it in a different area of the guitar, like let's say here. This is a good example because I just thought about G major to B7, but then I was like, oh, maybe I kind of like this D on top. So I just kept this D, right? So this is what I'm talking about, being flexible with the information. So it's B7, sharp 9. And then I was like, ah, if I'm already in this world of extension, I'll throw in the flat 9. And then major 7, and I was like, ah, I'm already in this lush world, let me throw in the 9. And then I played C minor 6, which is basically A minor, uh, A. I'm playing C minor 6, but it's basically the same kind of shape, if you will, of an A minor 7 flat 5, and then added the, the little uh, 9 there as well. 
again, it's not something that I could have done uh, quite a few years ago when I started playing guitar, but it's something that I can do now because I try every day to understand more of what I'm doing. I'm trying to listen to the sounds and colors of the chords. I'm trying to feel the pain of the changes of the chords and the progression and understand how they make me feel if it's a E minor and D minor or D major with some extensions how does that make me feel you know how do I tag that and how can I utilize it to create music because at the end of the day we want to use framework information to create okay if you survive till here that means that you are indeed a music lover and a guitar lover indeed so I'm gonna show you guys right now a little bit of framework so I'm gonna talk about the inversions for F major 7 we're gonna do it from the 6th string 5th string and the 4th string it's a little bit of work it's definitely definitely a hundred percent worth it so please stick around so what we're gonna do is this first of all we want to understand what is going on there so this is important. When we're playing chords on guitar, seven chords specifically, we have four notes, one, three, five, and seven. Now, usually when you play piano and playing C major seven, this is the voicing, this is how it's voiced. One, three, five, seven, like this. The only thing is we can't really do these voicing on a guitar because it technically it's not really possible. Check it out. So if I'm playing this is C major seven, this is C major seven first, Inversion, right? Not very friendly. And then C major the second version. Okay, I can do it with the open string. But you see, it's not really doable. So what we're doing is what we called drop two. We're literally dropping the second note. Second note. One, two, second note. The second note in this case is one, three, five, seven. So the three is the second note. Dropping the three from here, from here to here. So then I get one, five, seven, three. And indeed, one, five, seven, three, right? The good old fashioned voicing. So now we're gonna do that good old fashioned voicing from the sixth string. Here we go. F major, root position, one, five, seven, three. Let's listen to the color. Oof, beautiful. First inversion, and the same set of strings sound and look like this. Get A's in the bass, F, A, second inversion. Sorry, first inversion. Second inversion is C in the bass and E in the bass. This is again six string inversions. From the fifth string, I'm starting here from the C. A little stretchy, but doable. Then from the E, it looks like this. F, the good old classic version first inversion that I love so much. Then from the fourth string, root position, sorry, third inversion, root position, first inversion, and second inversion. I know this is a lot, we're gonna do it again, slower in time. From the sixth string, one, two, three, four, play it with me. One, two, three, four, you can use the PDF. Now from the fifth string, the same thing. Three, here we go. One, two, three, four, two, this is third inversion. Root, two, three, four, and first, two, three, four. One more time. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool. 
So now what you want to do is be able to do all these in a row on each string and then shifting between the string so you can just create a flow of F major 7. Now, F major 7. Now, it is important to be comfortable with it, to listen to the bass, so when you're doing it, you're also aware of the sound, but also to the top note, so you think about this A. La, do, mi, fa, right? All these notes, the bass, the top note, they're all important, and of course, when you're playing melodies, la, do, la, do. sometimes I'll even kind of accent it, if I want to really think about it as a melodic thing, which, you know, it is, because you're playing a lot of times melodies, so the top note will be pretty important. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you guys in the next video.